thought I would do a quick video of the 2016 Tacoma I have. Uh, TRD off-road double cab with a manual transmission. I uh, thought some people might like to see some of the accessories I've put on. Tried to keep it fairly clean. Put on a DB Customs grill with uh, some 4x4, or sorry, 2x2 LED pods. Um, I do have some um, all road or all pro off road um, rock sliders. I use them as side steps at the moment. I have no intention of taking this Tacoma rock climbing. Um, I just wanted something higher than than uh, traditional steps that hang down a couple inches. So right now these are just bolted to the frame. I haven't drilled it or anything, um, which is fine for for the use I, uh, I do at, at this time anyway. Um, I did end up getting the additional forward bed, round, bed rail mount and some all pro off-road um, mounts to to uh, put on a high lift jack. Um, again this is just mainly, I live in Alaska so if I were to get stuck in some mud or some some snow where I needed to lift it high enough off the ground um, to to um, either put something under the tire or change something out. I just wanted that option. Um, but it also serves my kind of backup winch since I don't have a winch built into the front bumper and I don't want to carry a come along. I can use that in a pinch. If I throw on the throw on some straps and I can use it to shift the truck to the side or pull it back or forwards if needed. So yeah, it'll be a multi-mission jack, not just for lifting things. Um, but in the back you also see I've put in some uh, inlays in the Tacoma um, stamp. I think that looks a lot better than just plain old white. And I do have another wheel set. Let me just pause the video and I'll just jump, jump to show you those. So the other wheel set I have is um, some TRD Pro Rim 17 inch. Um, again these are from the FJ. Um, cruiser, um, or is it the Forerunner? I can't remember. But anyway, it's the they're not specific to the Tacoma. It's uh, fr from the Forerunner platform, 17-inch. Um, I want to say there's an extra couple of millimeters of offset, but again, I, I'm not looking to do some rock climbing or heavy, heavy off-roading. I just wanted something that I could put on a meteor tread that looked a little bit better and this only gives me about a, another inch tire diameter so maybe another half inch ground clearance which is fine I mean I, I mainly want it for snow clearance and half an inch more is just fine for me at least for now who knows maybe after the warranty's up and everything I'll play with it more but for now I think those will look really good on the truck okay back to the truck itself um, so I guess I'll briefly just talk about the way I did up the, the lights up, up forward. Um, so they are, I don't know if you can see on there, uh, on the top there, um, Squadron Pros, um, two pods, and let me pop the hood. And just show part of my reaching around with, the, with one hand. Okay, so you got the two pods wired up, coming out the red wires, a bunch of zip ties running along here. And then I start doing a little bit of splicing. And so what I have running is an IQ, oops, you guys probably can't see that, an IQ 275. Um, it's an intelligent lighting controller. And basically what it does is it lets me, I think you can see it in three spots here. One and two, three down there in the corner. Um, basically I tap into the running lights, the low beams and the high beams. And it's not drawing power from those, but basically it's sensing when they get voltage. And basically if I turn on the daytime running lamps, not the not the normal LEDs for the truck, but just the so 
there's three settings uh, on, on the dash column if you remember. There's the uh, normal daytime running lamps, then there's like the all around running lights, and then low beam, and of course push it forward high beam, or if you want fog lamps too. But So I have mine set up so if I turn on the all around running lamps, the LEDs go to a 30% setting. If I turn on the normal um, low, low beams, I think I get um, 40%. Actually, I think I have the the all around running lights at a lower setting, maybe maybe ten or twenty. But I know the low beams they go on at forty percent. If I then go on high, they go on full full power. So I don't have any other switches. I just have them all going to that because as I cycle through it, it senses what what setting is of my uh, column switch. Um, so that kept it pretty clean. I didn't need any other power switches, I mean, they're, they're hardwired to the battery, um, positive or negative, still have a fuse in line, and basically, again, it's just using that controller to sense when there's positive voltage, or, yeah, for, in this case, positive voltage between those. The way it comes from the factory, it kind of gives you three options for a ground, nothing, or positive 12 voltage, but you can kind of fake it out to do a setting for voltage in either of those three to cycle between the different different power levels. You just got to get a little creative with how you want to tap into the main main, main lights. Um, if anyone has any questions on that, let me know. I'll, I'll show you what I did. Um, I think I'll just turn them on here briefly. Where did I put the key? It's in my pocket. Nope, not in my pocket. Other pocket. There it is. Oops, sorry for that quick pause there. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going to show you the lights when they're on. So, I'll have to start up the car just to have full effect here. So if you notice, I don't. All I have is normal low beam light switch. I don't really have anything that indicates otherwise, and it never did before or after I put in the LEDs. So when the running lamp is on, it should just be. It should just be the LEDs, like the, the stock ones. Yeah. So it's just the perimeter LEDs. Those are not on. I go up one, one tick. I should have a low setting. Now they're probably, yeah, you can see the LEDs kind of cycling, but roughly I, I got them so they're the same brightness as the uh, daytime lamps. And if I go up to low, yeah, I think it's, I think I set it to 40%. A little, a little hard to see in terms of brightness, just because you know, that's the way it works with video cameras. But they're roughly the same brightness as the low beams. Obviously, they project differently and further down the road. And of course, if I go high forward, um, I'll get full brightness. They haven't gone out; they've just gotten kind of really bright. And they do a really nice illumination of the sides of the road and basically up here in Alaska that's for avoiding moose. So again, most of the time if it gets foggy around town I'll, I'll kick on the um, all around running lights which will light up the rear rear um, brake lights. So that, yeah, those will come on and then I'll have my LEDs up forward. So if, it, if it's kind of half rainy or foggy, I'll turn those on. And pretty much I'll save the real lights for nighttime. And if I'm hitting open stretches of road or the no cars around, I'll occasionally put on the highs. But it works really well, nice and clean. Um, I don't have to worry about any additional switches. 
because I, I got down on the floor and was looking where to drill, or not drill, but snake wires through, and it was, in my opinion, more trouble than it was worth. I didn't want to mess up anything that was uh, stock, in case I do sell this down the road. I want to keep it, keep it original. And that's also why I haven't drilled any holes on the frame with those side steps yet. Um, either I'll wait till the warranty's up and or I'll uh, decide what I'll, other uses I want to do with the truck um, before I start fully mounting some rock rails. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't glide the truck over rocks, so no point in me having the extra, the extra uh, mounting points. Of course, it would be an, an additional spot to use that high lift jack if I, if I, um, fully bolted those down, but until I do that, that high lift jack is going to be either doing strap mounts through the wheels um, or actually attaching some winching straps to it to kind of pull it out of a ditch. Um, or I guess I could, in theory, I guess, use it on the, on the hitch. Um, but it, it's kind of at a uh, limited use um, jack at the moment. So, with that in mind, I may, I may eventually fully bolt the, the, the rock rails on. Um, otherwise, I think I've kept a pretty stock. Uh, if anyone has any questions about some of the accessories I put on, uh, let me know. I'd be happy to send you a link. For the tires I'm going to be putting on, again, they're only adding about an inch diameter, which is just a tick over the 3% rule for it going up a size without having to get new suspension or lift anything. I um, heard some people got have rubbing with that rim tire combination. Uh, some people don't. I think majority of people don't. Uh, I think probably the ones that do have mud flaps. I specifically was hunting around for a vehicle without mud flaps because... Again, up here they're just going to get clogged with snow or caught on um, on whatever, going down some, some light trails, uh, especially backing up. Um, I have no need to have those attached. So I think without the flaps I'm not going to have any issues with rubbing when I mount the other wheels. And that'll let me also avoid having to go to the dealer to swap out um, tires and or reset t the tire pressure monitoring s sensors. Um, those other tires do have sensors in them, and I do have a recalibrate tool that'll take care of that with, um, here at the house. So if anyone has any questions, let me know.